Guys, thank you so much for taking a second out of your busy day, checking out my YouTube channel, watching some of the videos. Interestingly enough, when I started this YouTube channel not that long ago, my goal was to kind of educate the public about music and all things musical, and it looks like now I'm learning a lot from you guys. I really appreciate every one of the comments that you guys take the time to write, and it means a lot to me. And I hate to ask this, because I hate when I go on a new YouTube channel and they have a five minute intro talking about you know smashing the like button smashing the subscribe button but if you could take one second and hit the subscribe button i'd really appreciate it really mean a lot to me oh please i insist go ahead take a second one click of a mouse button and thank you you guys rock it means the world to me enjoy the video and remember to comment let me know what you guys think thanks again guys it means the world to me Hello friends, today we are in psychedelic blue mode once again, and we are going to do, this is the one I've probably been asked the most for, we are going to do Creep, Coachella, Soundboard and Audience Footage, Prince. Let's just go right into it, shall we? So we know this song was made famous by Radiohead. They got sued by the Hollies about this song, eh? Something to do with the uh, chord progression uh, from the Hollies song. I have it on the tip of my tongue back in the 70s. But uh, I don't know if I really hear that, but, you know, that happens a lot once you come out with a song. Uh, even if there's been no copyright infringement intentionally uh, and there's money you're making money some people tend to come out of the woodwork but anyway let's enjoy this uh, i love the song creep by radiohead it is probably my top 100 all-time favorite songs uh so let's check out prince's version <laughs> So this is right off the soundboard. It sounds like he's got a little bit of a tremolo effect on that. Uh, off the soundboard, uh, usually if you've, if there's any mistakes, you're going to really notice them if it's the recordings right off the soundboard more. Uh, I wonder if it's a pre pre send recording before the effects, but it definitely sounds like he's got um, tremolo on his guitar for sure. <laughs> Got a little video there. It's audience version, but I guess it's synced with the sound here. Wouldn't that be an honor, writing a song and then having Prince cover it? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? Comes out, putting the guitar on. I like the way he's building up the anticipation with the audience there. This guy was just so brilliant, so ahead of his time. See that? So they're extending the intro. He's walking out, putting the guitar on. They're just building up the anticipation, right? Really, really cool stuff. Love 
Playing with the crowd there, right? Pretending to walk off. Remember, folks, this song is all about dynamics, okay? The Radiohead version, uh, for sure, the different dynamics. It's interesting to watch, you know, even with a low-quality video and recording from the soundboard. For the people that don't know, I a lot of people mentioned wanting to see me react to this, get me to react to this, and I held off for a long time because I'm really building up this thing of Prince. He's like, amazing. But there's some uh, sound recording uh, videos out there of live performances that really can disappoint people because if it's off the soundboard, sometimes you're getting it, the mix before it's all processed with effects and blended in and sent out through the main PA uh, sound system to the audience. And there's some nasty stuff out there that's been covered up with a lot of effects in the final mix for live. And... Uh, no, he sounds great. <laughs> this is this this is this is a testament to him and his playing. Now, this is a soundboard mix, okay? Yeah. The first thing he was doing, that was a marvelous guitar solo that really fit the song. All his solos tend to fit the song. There's a groove to them. It's like telling a good story within a good story. Uh, for me, even though I'm a technique guy, I can take the flashiest guitar solos. Uh, I'm not going to name artists out there, but I can take the flashiest guitar solos and go, eh, eh. 
But now people that can fit the flashiest guitar solos within a great song, that's a whole other different level of guitar playing. So what he was doing there in the beginning, he was doing some pentatonic type bending. They're called unison bends. And he does it in a way that's really amazing. What he's doing is, it's a really cool concept. You're doing bends, but you're adding some what are called chromatic notes to build the tension. Until then, you resolve it to make it gives you that just oh, amazing feeling. Another cool thing in this, he did some really cool legato licks, which is basically a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs they put into a phrase. Um, that's the first time I really got to see his legato ability, and it was quite good. I was really uh, impressed with it. And, you know, his guitar solo, you know, it wasn't 10 minutes long. He wanted to keep it short to fit the dynamics of the song, what he was doing. Great. Again, this is a sound recording. Oh, this is off the soundboard, right? Like, and it's pretty good, which says a lot about him because I've seen some famous artists out there who have had live sound off the soundboard recordings, and it's pretty bad. So, yeah, great guitar solo. It was really awesome. And he and he, he didn't keep it long. He kept it short to the point. He said what I needed. He said what he needed to say in the guitar solo. Again, we talked about some of the licks that he did there and the techniques. But he just said what he needed to say, and it was pretty quick, and he went right back into the song. He felt he's taking the song by Radiohead, and he's making it his own. That's what he's doing. And it's great. He's doing a great job. So there, he, again, he's starting that solo, he's building a lot of tension, okay? But another great thing about this with Prince is, another great thing here about Prince is that he was showing off his alternate picking ability. Uh, he had some good licks in there, uh, and he had a really good descending run using alternate picking, and it was clean, it was good. I'm, wow. <laughs> you guys keep throwing stuff at me that amazes me here. Wow. Really underrated as a guitar player, eh? Like, uh, hmm. Saw some new techniques of his in this in this guitar solo. It was great. What can you say about that? I he, I saw some new techniques from him on the guitar. 
as I said, the way he uses chromatics with his unison bending and then to resolve. We got a good look at his alternate picking there. He had some really cool licks. Great descending run with his alternate picking. Great legato chops. So this one, this one, you guys have been mentioning this one for weeks, and I was like, oh, it's a soundboard recording. I don't want this. Sound. My view of Prince has kept building and building and building. I didn't want to just get one of that where it's live off the soundboard, and then you're like, oh, no. But even then, that says a lot about him because it sounded amazing. Uh, I'm not going to mention names. Again, I tried to keep my channel positive. Uh, I did a, I had to do, unfortunately, it was a very bad reaction video to a very bad pop song the other day. Uh, the song was, uh, my video was blocked on YouTube once again, so maybe that was a good thing of a different artist or whatever. Uh, but I mean, to make it sound good off the soundboard, that was incredible. Uh, the, you know, even the video quality wasn't the best. It was uh, it was still very entertaining. It was amazing. Like, th these are legendary performances. Wow. That would be something. Sorry, I can't get my words together. I'm, that would be something, writing a song and having Prince wanted to cover it, you know. Kind of like, it would remind me a little bit of when uh, Johnny Cash, you know, did uh, some covers of Hurt, of course, uh, from Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. And also, uh, you know, he covered... Um, a Soundgarden song like that would be something having an absolute legend wanting to cover some of your material I couldn't imagine what that must feel like it was amazing he made it his own but he still paid good respect and tribute to the original version and the guitar solos were awesome it was and the way he used the dynamics to build it up bring it down it was incredible because dynamics were an important part of that song guys that is probably one of my favorite yet uh, so far from a guitar standpoint Great guitar solo, a little bit more insight on some of his techniques that I was a little curious about. And he was very proficient, very proficient, very underrated as a guitar player. So that's all I have to say on that, guys. Remember, comment below, whatever you'd like to see me react to. If there's topics related to music that you'd like to see me discuss as well, I'll post in the comment section. And uh, yeah, that was amazing. So uh, let's keep them coming here. And uh, remember, practice hard, practice smart. We'll see you soon.